Hello folks, I'm Alex, this is Alex Unabridged, and this is my wrap up for July. So welcome or welcome back to the channel if that is the case. Yes, time to tell you about the books that I got through in the month of July. Uh, I got through eight books in total. Uh, four of them were audiobooks, three were ebooks, and one was a physical book. Um, my theme for the month was Game On. Um, so I've been reading some books related to video games to celebrate my love of gaming uh, through reading. Um, four of the books that I read fit in to this theme. Uh, the ratings for the month range from a 2.5 at the lowest end uh, to a 5 star at the top. There is one 5 star this month, which I shall get to in a moment. Uh, so then, to the books. Uh, this is in the order in which I read them. So, first up, uh, we've got Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky. Adrian Tchaikovsky was the author that I kind of wanted to focus on a bit this month. Read a couple of, of, uh, of his books because I've never ever read one short thing from him before uh, and I wanted to explore some of his stuff a bit further uh, and I wasn't disappointed. <laughs> uh, so Children of Time, for anyone who do doesn't know, this is kind of, this kind of follows sort of a, 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 an arc ship of humans, uh, sort of the last vestiges of humanity who are fleeing a dying earth. Uh, they discover a, a paradise planet um, terraformed eons ago by their ancestors, uh, but on that planet is a extremely evolved and advanced uh, race of spiders. <laughs> um, and it's kind of a battle between uh, spiders and spider and human civilization, essentially, uh, for the right to inherit this planet. Um, yeah, this, I loved this so much. It this was phenomenal. I'd heard good things about it, but I was absolutely captured by this. I gave this a 9 out of 10. This is the 5 star. It was an easy 5 star. Um, it's a brilliant premise, uh, and the execution is fantastic as well. Uh, I loved the stuff about the spider's evolution from being, you know, kind of just a norm normal tiny spider um, to this kind of like advanced civilization with technology, science, religion, politics, um, all that kind of thing. The um, the way that Tchaikovsky writes the sp spider characters, he just gives them like this. He is, essentially uses like three or four names for them, uh, for individual spiders and kind of transposes them down the generations. Uh, so you've got Portia, you've got Bianca. Uh, you've got Fabian, who's one of the males, uh, and it's, you know, it, it, it just, it, it, it kind of links you to them really, really well. Um, the human characters are also great. There's a lot of humour in them, for sure. Um, and it introduced me to, like, one of my favourite new characters uh, of, of Verana Kern, uh, who is kind of the scientist who originally uh, seeded the planet, essentially with a virus that, that kick-started this evolution. Um, I won't give out, I won't give too much away about her because her, her character arc is, is quite, uh, is, is really interesting. And I think it's better if you kind of go into that a bit blind. Um, but yeah, she has a fantastic character arc and she's a highly entertaining part of the story as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, 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 the social science elements of this were fantastic, as I say, in terms of the sort of, uh, evolution of the society of spiders and the sciencey science bits the spacey science bits were you know great really well done as well um i just loved this i just as i say it was just a real joy to listen to and it was very well narrated as well by Med mel hudson um so yeah so that's the first one in fact i loved that so much that i went straight on into reading the second in that trilogy which is Children of Ruin. So this is set in the same universe as Children of Time. We get more of our human and spider characters, uh, but this time we've also got a new uh, race of evolved creatures to meet, uh, octopuses. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so this follows kind of the past and present situations within, within a new system that we haven't been to before and on a new planet called Nod. Um, we meet kind of these new evolved uh, octopuses and learn where they came from, uh, but also discover what happened to this planet of Nod eons ago when its terraforming project uh, unleashed a, an ancient uh, slumbering alien horror. <laughs> um, so it's, it's a little bit different this one um, this one was an 8.5 out of 10 and a 4.5 stars on Storygraph uh, I still loved this uh, there were elements of this that I think I even loved more than Children of Time but overall it just wasn't quite the same level it was close but not quite um, the discussion in this one is much more around kind of rather than being evolution, it's much more around communication and cooperation across species. Um, that was really well done, really fascinating, especially the octopus stuff, the way that they communicate their language, for want of a better word, um, is very, very different. And there's a there's a there's a lot of kind of uh, diplomacy that needs to happen in this book between humans and, and uh, spiders and octopuses. So you see, you've essentially got three different races with three different communication systems, all trying to like figure out, you know, a plan to work together to defeat or to solve this, you know, um, somewhat sinister, somewhat uh, dangerous um, threat, puzzle, whatever you want to call it. Um, there's some fantastic mind melty ideas in it as well about AI and consciousness and shared consciousness. Um, that got quite intense towards the end of it and it left me quite discombobulated when I finished it, but in a good way. It's that kind of good mind meltiness. Um, it, it maybe could do with a little bit more clarity um, in, in terms of in the writing. Um, the best element, I think, for me in this, or the most fun element in this for me, um, was the stuff that leaned more heavily into horror, um, which the first book didn't. Um, there's some really creepy stuff in this one. Um, the narrator, I think, made it more creepy. Um, so kudos to Mel Hudson again for, for that. Um, but yet yeah, the phrase, we're going on an adventure... Um, shouldn't be scary, but in the con context of the story and the book and what's going on, it creeped the hell out of me every time it was said. Um, I'll do a full review of um, the trilogy when I've uh, finished, when I've, when I've read Children of Memory, uh, which is the third in the, in the, in the trilogy, uh, which will be in September. I'm definitely going to get that finished soon before the rest of it kind of leaves my head. Uh, so I'll say I'll save extended thoughts for then and, you know, kind of a tying together kind of thoughts uh, for then as well. But so far, first two books have absolutely knocked my socks off. Loved them. OK, next up then, I read Planet of the Apes or listened to Planet of the Apes uh, by Pierre Boulle. Uh, this was one of the selections for my science fiction for the somewhat hesitant reading project. Uh, where I'm trying to read my way through a load of classic sci-fi. Um, this follows uh, a journalist, uh, Ulysses Maru, uh, a member of a scientific expedition whose spaceship uh, crashes on a planet inhabited by highly civilised apes. Um, the apes have established a society uh, where they hold dominion over the primitive humans on the planet, uh, and Maru's captured and treated brutally as as a as a dumb animal, basically. Uh, but he manages to learn to communicate with the apes and he endears himself to two chimpanzees, Zira and Cornelius, uh, who help Maru plot his escape. Um, yeah, this one was a five out of ten and this is the 2.5 stars on Storygraph. I didn't get on with this at all. I have got a full review out for this Um already which i'll link to in the description um but yeah basically i found it quite dull quite repetitive it didn't hold my attention i couldn't connect with much of it at all uh, i really didn't like maru as a character he's superior pompous just generally a bit of an arse um and it's just it feels really dated to me um there's quite a few bits of very very dated um attitudes especially towards women 
Um, but it, it did have some interesting social commentary, social satire in it, which I did I did find some enjoyment in. So that's why it's not a DNF or a one star. Uh, but yeah, it yeah I it's just not for me. That one. Um, okay, the fourth book then um, I I stuck with the monkey theme. Um, and I read Journey to the West, The Monkey King by Wu Cheng En. Uh, this is an abridged version of Journey to the West, just covering a selection of the Monkey King stories because the full kind of uh, work, if you like, is massive. It's, you know, like several volumes of thousand pages plus. Um, so this is just the, some of the Monkey King stuff. Uh, this one is part of my gaming related reading because it's somewhat of an inspiration for a, a video game that's that's just about to come out. I don't think it'll be out by the time I release this video. So yeah, I think it's just about to come out called Black Myth Wukong. This is the classic fantasy story from uh, Chinese literature uh, in which the mischievous shape-shifting monkey king uh, is imprisoned for stealing immortality uh, and then wins a chance at redemption by protecting a monk on a perilous quest for sacred scriptures. Uh, he's joined along the way uh, by two other fallen immortals, Pigsy, a flying pig fiend, and Sandy, uh, a depressive sand monster. Uh, and Monkey does battle with a host of demons, fiends, dragons, ogres, wizards, um, always getting into dire straits, but always coming up with an ingenious plan to escape the clutches of his foes at the very last minute. <laughs> um, so yeah, I really enjoyed this. I gave this um, an 8 out of 10. This is a 4 star on Storygraph. This is really good fun um, and really interesting in terms of the mythology and philosophy in it as well. Um, Monkey's a great character, if not a little bit annoying. Um, he can be quite arrogant, um, quite rude, <laughs> um, but there is a real charm to his character as well. He's a he's lovable rogue, basically. Um, he's got some really cool powers. He can transform himself into pretty much whatever he likes. Uh, he can turn each of his, his um, body's hairs into an army of clones. Uh, he can cover huge distances using a, a cloud somersault. Uh, he's quite the action hero sometimes, really. Um, the humour in this is great. Uh, the translation is particularly good, I think, uh, in terms of updating the phrasing, um, etc. So it's it's really relatable, recognisable to modern audiences. Um, the narration really helped with the humour too, I think. Uh, it was it was somewhat over the top in terms of its performance sometimes, um, especially the character voices are very OTT. Um, but I liked that. It gave it real life. Um, it's very kind of, it, it, it's, it, it was a great experience of, of storytelling, you know, having really feeling like you're having a story told. Um, and I really like the scope of the story as well. It's kind of, it's bits of everything. It's an action adventure. It's a comic satire. Um, it's an exploration of spiritual thinking. It's got a lot of elements to it, but it really is just a quite a fast paced, fun story or series of stories. It kind of, you know, it, it is more of a series of adventures of Monkey and uh, his, you know, little gang, essentially. Um, so, yeah, really enjoyed that one. OK, next up, we've got uh, We Can Remember It For You Wholesale by Philip K. Dick. This was the other science fiction for the somewhat hesitant uh, pick that I had for this month. Um, this is just a short story. If I have it here, that's this is the full book. I just read one story out of this. It's a short story of 17 pages and it's the basis for the film Total Recall. Um, it follows uh, Douglas Quayle, who is a bored office worker who becomes obsessed with going to Mars. He can't afford a real trip. So he turns to Recall Incorporated, a company that can implant false memories of uh, realistic experiences. Uh, Doug opts for a secret agent on Mars package and begins the process of having these memories transplanted. Uh, but the process triggers buried memories of a real trip to, to Mars where he worked as a government assassin. Uh, and it seems that his real memories were the implants. So this one is a uh, an 8.5 out of 10. I haven't given it a star rating because it won't go on Storygraph 
in isolation when I've read the rest of the book then I'll do a full you know a full rating and review for the full book um I've done a review for this on the channel already it's part of my science fiction wrap up uh, for for July um but yeah, this was a really interesting reading experience for me. I love the film Total Recall. It's one of my favourite films of all time. Um, and it was just really interesting to see where that film had come from. But also the differences in it, because the short story is quite different beyond the sort of premise and the sort of the opening few pages. Um, but Philip K. Dick never, makes to, never fails to make me think. Uh, it was no different uh, in this, despite the short length. It packs a hell of a punch, this story. Um, it's got some great philosophy, some great questions being asked, some great sort of things to puzzle over, great off the wall ideas, what I'd expect from PKD really. And yeah, just a really, really interesting, really enjoyable, fast um, little read uh, one lunchtime. And I'm just really glad I've read it, especially as I say, especially because I love, love the film, the Arnie film, Total Recall. Um, okie dokes then, next up I've got another one of my gaming related reads um, and this was Zero Lives Remaining by Adam Cesar Cesare, uh, I'm not sure how you pronounce that uh, surname um, this was a novella this is set in a games arcade uh, and is about kind of the, the ghost of a former employee there who died on the job called, um, called Robbie um, who is trapped in the arcade as a ghost um, when he tries to protect a, uh, a young gamer who's being bullied uh, his good intentions unleash a deadly supernatural threat on everyone trapped inside the arcade um, yeah this was really enjoyable bonkers good fun i gave this a 7.5 out of 10 and a 3.5 stars on storygraph um, the atmosphere in this was really good. It really kind of evoked, you know, the arcade, um, you know, the, the sort of people you'd find in it, um, the sort of um, visuals you'd expect, things like that, just the general feel of it. Um, it got some great imaginative deaths in it as well. <laughs> this is definitely horror. Um, but yeah, highly entertaining deaths, quite gross at times really entertaining and as I say and just kind of a bit bleh. um there are plenty of callbacks to old school arcade games um and as I say the sort of people that you'd find in that sort of establishment um and yeah just as I say it was a quick one I think it was about 100 pages um and it was a highly entertaining fast-paced um bonkers read uh, I definitely recommend that one if you want a good fast slightly gross <laughs> horror novella okay next up then another gaming one and that is how to defeat a demon king in 10 easy steps by andrew rowe um this is a lit rpg so this is um where the game mechanics exist in the world of the story and the characters are aware of their existence it's not a game as in you play it it's it's you know a a uh, piece of literature that uses the game mechanics. Uh, and in this world, uh, a prophesied hero is still decades away from turning up, um, but a determined young woman, Yui Shaw, takes it upon herself to master the hero's journey and defeat the conquering demon king before it's too late for the world. Um, Yui's certainly no uh, hero, but she has a very ambitious plan, uh, a 10-step plan, uh, and she has some help as well in the form of a fashion loving monk called Ken uh, and a rather sarcastic and difficult fairy. Um, this one I gave a 7.5 out of 10 to uh, and another 3.5 stars. This was really sweet, a really sort of loving parody of classic Japanese games like Zelda, Dragon Age, that sort of thing. Um, the sense of humour in this was great. Um, it's quite off the wall. <laughs> um, it's also, it also could be quite dry. Um, Yui has a bonkers scheme uh, to beat the Demon King and it kind of flies in the face of all the tropes that you'd see in uh, RPG games that it's parodying. Uh, you know, it subverts those tropes. 
some of the things that Andrew Rowe has kind of come up with that take off, you know, that that those conventions of this particular gaming genre, I thought were brilliant. They were they were great. They were really well done. Um, I really enjoyed the characters. They were sweet. They were strong, open characters, diverse, um, and they had a lot of heart to them. They really did. Um, the gaming elements were handled really well. Uh, things like stats, classes, levels, all that kind of stuff. The gaming mechanics within it. They never felt confusing or boring. They were parodied as much as kind of some of the other tropes within the game. Um, the action was really well written. It was exciting and funny at the same time. Um, and I think if you like those sort of games, um, then... You know, this really does pay homage to them, and I would certainly recommend giving it a go. It was a really good, fun read. It was, as I say, it was, it was a really sweet read as well. Uh, okay, and then finally then, uh, we've got Troll Slayer by William King, uh, which is the first book in the Gotrek and Felix saga. This is Warhammer Chronicles, so this is the fan Warhammer fantasy rather than Warhammer 40k. Um and yeah, this is a book of connected short stories that introduces to Gotrek, the Troll Slayer, a doomed dwarf warrior uh, seeking a, an honourable death, uh, and Felix, his oath-bound chronicler, um, as they embark on a series of perilous adventures across the Empire, um, as they battle mutants, goblins, trolls, and other minions of the Chaos Gods, Felix finds his feet as a warrior in his own right and learns more about the dark world found outside the safe confines of the city where he grew up. Um, yeah, I love this. <laughs> um, again, it, this was really, really entertaining. Um, I gave this an 8 out of 10. This is a four star read. This is my uh, first foray into Warhammer fiction uh, and I will definitely be going back for some more. Um, so yeah, this it's it's nice and dark. That's one thing I really liked about it. It's a pretty nasty world that we're introduced to here, um, but it is somewhat lightened by some of the humour in it. Um, although some of that is quite on, is on the dark side, <laughs> but it's it, you know it's, there's sharpness, there's a dryness to it as well, um, and you know Fe the character of Felix particularly lightens things somewhat. Um, it's got great characters, uh, that's the other thing. Felix is particularly well explored, um, as it's told more from his perspective. It's third person, but we're very much getting kind of Felix's kind of um, eyes on things, Felix's thoughts. Um, but all the characters that we meet have quite distinct characteristics, even the, the sort of the, the small, you know, secondary characters who we might only meet for a relatively short amount of time in one story. Um, they still all tell us something about the setting, the world, how the society works, and they're all, you know, if they're generally quite relatable or they're recognisable, and they um, they add a richness to the whole kind of, as I say, the whole selection of stories and to the world. Um, it's got some really good action in it. I really enjoyed the action in it. Um, it's got some good pacing as well. Um, the slower bits outside of sort of, you know, the fighty fighty um, are still really interesting um, because they are there to, you know, build again, the, the world building is good um, or they're increasing kind of, you know, the mystery of things, uh, the tension, things like that, or they're a little bit of kind of character exposition, but the, the, they're managed really well in terms of the pacing. It's a really good kind of up and down. It never once dragged at any point. Um, it's super accessible writing, I think, from from King. Um, that's what ha really helped me get into it straight away. I was shocked at how much I liked this. I thought I would, I thought I would enjoy it, but I don't often get on with this kind of sort of fantasy, this sort of more high fantasy, I guess. Um, but I was totally, totally in it straight away, uh, and I think that's down to the accessibility of the writing and the um the world building um but yeah i'm definitely on board with this <laughs> um which is a lot for me to say with a, a fantasy series um i'll definitely be grabbing the next one um but yeah as i say i was really 
surprised at how much I enjoyed this and I'm kind of, you know, quite eager <laughs> to get on with more in this series. There are a lot in this series, I think. I think there are sort of 16 mainline books and then beyond that there are even more sort of collections and stuff. So yeah, there's a lot to get through, which is great. <laughs> So that's everything then. That's my eight books for the for July. Um, a good month again, a really good month again. Um, only one which I didn't really enjoy. Everything else was was good, fast paced, easy to get through. Um, just really enjoyed my reading. Um, so there we go, folks. I will leave it there for today. Um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, as always, do drop your thoughts in the comments below. Do let me know if you've read any of, of the books I've mentioned today and what you thought or if I've convinced you to give any of them a go. Um, I will be back on Sunday with my weekly vlog. Um, so I do hope you'll join me for that then. But from me, for now, that's Tarah.